Um, what do you guys want to see? I have. I can do a Team Slayer and Narrows. I can do a TS Amp. I don't see any like Team Slayer mid chips. Maybe on the old tag. Amp. Amp's real short. So. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's been so long. Let's see. What was I playing this with? Okay, I was playing it with my team. Now there's two two different possibilities of this. Maybe we lost, and that's why I maybe want to check it out, or maybe I particularly did bad, and I wanted to, you know, check it out, or else maybe I did very well. So we might be able to take, tell right away. But I guess I'll just commentate it as I go on. Um, a lot of times I always push towards this side, like I felt like you can actually get a good angle at, um, dude what do we even call this side? First off, what were the bases again? Is it like red, gold, green, and blue? It's been so long since I had to call out purple, this is called perp, you think? P3? That's right, P, yeah, P1, P2, P3. Um, that's one thing that our team did really good on this map was, we came up with some really good call outs and we also, um, on top of that, we also made them very efficient callouts with as few syllables as possible because that way you can get the callouts faster. You can say, like, you know, P1, P3, like G1, G3. Like, yeah, I guess there's no big difference between like Gold 1, Gold 3, but um, we also came up with like really good callouts. Like, we'd call certain things like cuts and stuff. Like, this, this I believe was curb right inside here, and this was like cut so that you. You basically know if he's pink side or gold side of blue or red. And we'd have, you know, very specific call-outs for a lot of different spots. So, um, a lot of teams caught on to our call-outs and kind of used them as well. So, right here, I'm just buying as much time as possible. I already figure I'm dead. But I just want to make sure that if I'm dying, hopefully my teammates can get some shots on them before I die. And take advantage of it. I'm going to check out my teammates first, see where that shot was coming from. And I just get destroyed there. So I guess maybe I pushed out a little too fast. Like I said, I don't know what happens in this game type, if it's one we lose or whatever. I can obviously tell I'm not host or not a good connection. You can see how laggy it is. Yeah, I just don't, I only feel comfortable getting close to people. Um, that's the only way I feels like my shots can register. <laughs> now, a lot of times people, when they looked at how this map was broken up into spawns, people thought of it in four ways. They thought of like, okay, there's, there's blue, there's red, there's gold, and then there's pink tower. But when I generally looked at this map and thought of it spawn-wise, I, I kind of broke it up into eight segments. Because there's so many different times where you can spawn, you know, pink side red, and then they can spawn gold side red. So I kind of looked at these ones not as having much influence on each other. So for example, um, I would never, I would never assume when I spawned right here that they they aren't going to spawn right next to me at red because I don't feel like I have a spawn influence on blocking those. Because I'd check the two segments next to me. I'd look look over here at pink. I'd look over here to to my left at red. So that's just kind of how, in my mind, I divide the map up as far as um, where people were spawning or how I looked at spawns on the map. Because some people, a lot of times, you'd get up on like these towers that I'm looking at with the camera right now, and obviously you can spawn kill them here. Generally, they're going to spawn over these spots, like where I'm looking up now, compared to the one right below, because you don't, I don't know. That's just how I looked at the spawns, I guess is what I'm trying to say, is I looked at it as cast like eighths instead of fourths.
Walshy, what kind of lamps do you like? Asks whatever chopsticks. Um, I, I guess, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought about my lamp fetish. Another thing our team strat always was on this was we'd always try to make sure we get someone on at least one of the towers. We don't have it. We we don't want to have everyone up top. Like it's kind of more like you want to have at least a couple up top, and then the rest kind of down low, roaming, like flanking and getting the finishes. So these people that are up top, like Shockwave, for example, he's gonna be initiator. He's gonna stay up top, do as much damage, and try to pretty much, like I said, take as much attention as possible away from the other team. But me on the other hand, like when I'm down low like that, I'm gonna go around and try to get those finishes on those people that he's calling out weak. Right there, just trying to buy as much time as possible for teammates so they can get the finishes. Even if I get, even though I get finished right there, it's it's always been kind of one of my goals when I'm playing is I want to make as many people have to work to kill me as possible. That way, it's not like one person just is able to kill me and move on to the next person. I want I want to force the other team to have to kill like to have to use teamwork to kill me. They have to use at least a couple people to kill me in those cases. Whereas if they didn't use teamwork. I would get away in certain situations like that, and it's frustrating. So basically, I just want to make sure that I give them as many chances as possible to um, make a mistake and for me to live. Right there, I don't even finish that guy. Like, I don't charge after him because in a situation like that, I noticed that he had teammates over at red base like this. Like, I know for sure I was shooting someone under here. Where's he at? Uh, there's the guy. There's one guy there, at least. There's another guy over here. And even though he was one shot, it'd be stupid of me to lean over and go kill him and go one for one with him. Basically, it's like I would never trade me being a full shield guy to go one for one with a one shot guy. So you need to realize what situations you actually kill someone and get away with it. And he jumped out there again, so I might have actually had a chance to finish him. So I get the finish there, since he jumped out and made a mistake. Had he just waited over on this ledge, I would have never charged over and finished him. So he actually made a mistake like that, and I still got the kill. So you don't always have to force situations. Um, like, that guy just made a complete mistake, I stayed in a safer position, and I, and I lived because of it. Or I had a better chance of living until I charged out like that. There's sort of the thing that I was saying before, how I think of the ma the map in eighths as far as spawns, because look at that, I still spawned on pink side of blue when there's got two guys over uh, gold side of blue. And yeah, that's why you always have to be very aware of the spawns. I know those guys spawn there, so here's what I'm thinking right now, is after I get those kills and I kill this guy, I'm probably going to either check gold or instantly check over to red because first off they have a negative influence of spawns over at pink. At least um, they have it on pink side blue. And they also have negative influence of spawns on both sides of blue. So they're most likely not going to spawn on those three eighths of the map. So the rest of the map they could still spawn red side um, pink. They could spawn all of red and all of gold. So we're going to probably team wise we're going to narrow down what spawn points they're going to get. And from there as soon as we see one or two spawn there, we're going to know they're probably all spawning there. So that's where we are just going to kind of, like, once we find where they're at, we're going to try closing on them if possible. For example, if they spawn gold, we don't really have an opportunity to close down on them. Because if you look at where my teammates are placed, we have Shockwave at pink, we have one of us dead, and Nade's over there. So, in this case, actually, no matter where they spawn, whether it's gold or, if they spawn gold or red, we really can't close in on them on this situation. So. Someone said, Walshy, you're beating a dead horse right now. Is this not, uh, do you guys want me to just play the game and not talk then? I could do that too. Do you want me to just go through it faster? Okay. 
So, like I said, you notice how they, they spawned red. Like I said, that they were going to spawn one of those, like, on the five-eighths of the map. Those other positions. Looks like we spawned pink side of red. So we now know, since we spawned pink side red, we know that they are for sure going to be at red and at gold. That's where they're all going to spawn for sure. And we already see them at red, so we can almost assume, alright, we can close in on there. Like I said, we... We really can't close in until we get some better positioning. So it looks like since I'm the furthest away, a lot of times when I'm the furthest one back on my team, or the furthest away from the enemy, I want to put myself out there the most and put as much shots and take as much damage as possible. That way my other teammates that spawn closer, such as, um, looks like Defy spawned pink side red. I want to basically make sure that they don't see him and that he can run to weak people if he goes try, tries to get a finish. So. right here I don't, I don't even mind if i jump out um oh yeah the other thing that'll happen so we we just killed two people anytime we get a kill here those those previous kills that we had at blue base those spawn influence those negative spawn influences are long gone that i don't know exactly how long each death lasts or has influence so after each kill i am now going to look behind me and see if i can get an easy spawn kill right next to me so the spots i'm going to check is i can get easy ass kills like pink side blue and more importantly blue base itself. I check blue base first because if they do spawn there, they actually have a chance of doing more damage to me and possibly taking me down. Whereas if they spawn pink side blue and they get a first shot at me or something like that, I don't care. I can still win that battle. I can still stay alive much easier because they're in much worse spawn. Uh, someone asked, can someone tell me what he means by negative spawns? I mean, he ha they have a less likely chance of spawning there when I say negative spots. So if I'm standing in a certain location or Alright, I'll put it this way. If a if an enemy is near a spawn point, me and my team has a less chance like has less of a chance to spawn there. Whereas another thing that negative influences spawns, like if I died in that spot, me and my team have a negative or less likely of a chance to spawn in that spot. Um, whereas positive influence is like my team. Like for example, if my team is standing near a spawn point, we have more of a chance to spawn in that spot. I hope that kinda helps. That's kind of the easiest way I can explain it. So right here, we already had a couple kills, so I should be checking blue base to make sure that they aren't spawning there. And it looks like I'm checking it. So now that I know that they're not spawning there, I can tell... Well, first off, they haven't spawned yet, so... Um, now one of them has spawned. But So I'm checking blue and pink, like I said before. I'll check the base behind me, and I'm going to continually check this because people continuously die. Like, look at, we have tracers dead, we have zero dead. Um, and there's such a likely such a likely chance that someone's going to spawn right near me soon. And there's someone. And what I'm doing here is, I'm just going to, like, I don't even have to drop and finish that guy. Um, I don't know what I do here in this situation, but basically my whole goal is to just do damage to him, do, just dam do as much damage to any of the spawners here, and just be a nuisance. Because he cannot focus on any other part of the map besides me. And there's no reason for me to get up my height advantage. I might as well stay here, see if he makes a mistake, like jumps out or tries to jump up and finish me. Someone said he got bored of Halo 4. I knew that game was boring. Actually, you're wrong. I'm just showing some people some old clips and someone wanted me to commentate on an old video. So you can take 10 minutes to watch this. So right here, like you notice that L Hustle guy, he must have got frustrated and charged out after me. Let me see what he did. So look at he's all focused on me and one of my teammates starts finishing him. So yeah, the only thing he was focused on right at that moment was me on top of that tower. He did not see any of my teammates coming in there. And that's why I didn't even drop down to challenge. Like, I just kept all my shield and let someone else finish him. So, that's why I was saying why that guy can't focus on anything else except for me until he kills me. And that's why I'm not going to him. I'm letting him come to me. It looks like we killed one. Looks like we're going to kill a second. Oh, see, like I said, when a guy's down bomb pink, I'm not concerned about him at all. Like, he's such an easy kill for me. Now that there's multiple people... I get on the other side. I must have just slipped there, but what I always try to do is I use this little fin that I'm looking at right up here when I was an amp, and I would stay, depending on what side I'm fighting. So, for example, if I'm fighting a guy at pink side, I'll try to stay on the opposite side of this fin so I can come here and, like, wall glitch off a guy here. Whereas if I'm fighting a guy at blue, I'll stay on this side of the fin so I can wall glitch him, like, here. Like, get good angles that way. And it looks like I get back on... Yeah, so I try to get on this side of the fin to fight pink side. I must have just slipped and fell. That's why I was on the ground. And I don't know...